The Easter message according to the Gospel of John. John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. The other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. And as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead, then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away the Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. She said, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and saw, said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that they had said these things to her. And when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Three things in this last day and beginning day of Jesus Holy Week I think of three things that are very different I've never noticed before one is when Pilate knows Jesus is innocent he says I wash my hands of this since we've been washing our hands so much I just can't help but think about that because COVID-19, as long as we haven't touched our face, can be washed away. Yet we can't wash away our guilt or the consequences of our behavior. He washed his hands. And the next thing that I notice is that Mary tries to touch Jesus and he said, wait, don't touch me yet. I have not ascended to my Father and your Father, my Lord and your God. And 
I'm thinking about how Mary Magdalene went to the garden alone. The different gospels record it differently. And some of the other women are not mentioned in John's gospel, but all four gospels mention Mary Magdala, so she definitely was there. I love the hymn in the garden. I come to the garden alone. And I would stay in the garden with him, but he bids me go. That hymn was written about Mary Magdalene at the tomb of resurrection. And I just th see it differently because she was alone, because she couldn't touch him. It's very much what we're dealing with today alone in our homes, in this empty sanctuary. I think of that first Easter, it wasn't pomp and circumstance. It wasn't fanfare. I can't wait for our choir to come back and for our organist to come back. It's going to be majestic. But that first one, it was Mary in the garden alone. And the third thing I noticed very differently is the disciples were locked where? In their homes. Yes, they were self-quarantined. They were self-isolated for fear, not fear of a virus. So yes, it was different, but they were locked in their homes that first Easter. That's where they were, Easter night. And what happened? Jesus found a way to go into that locked room and what did he do? He breathed on them. Breathe on me, breath of God, so that I may love as you love. Breathe on me, breath of God. He breathed on them, whether it's Greek or Hebrew, Ruah, Numah, the spirit and breath is the same word. He breathed on them and he said, peace. We're too locked in our homes. And we too would like to see that peace and breathe that air. So may this Easter be like the first Easter when God finds a way to lock, to go into our locked homes, into our locked hearts, into our locked minds, and finds a way to breathe on us the breath of life, to offer peace, peace to you this Easter season. Amen.